What's going on ladies and gents? Hope this video finds you well wherever you are in the world today. Back with another organized rant for you guys. And today I'm, I'm talking to the fellas out there. Uh, the fellas that are trying to figure it out. The fellas that are trying to find their place in the world today. The fellas that are trying to be independent, trying to survive and thrive and stand on their own two feet. Uh, this is for you today and I just wanna share my perspective um, of what I'm going through and what I've gone through um, and continuing to fight um to survive and evolve um for as a man and uh i was having a conversation the other day with uh with a, a fellow entrepreneur and we were talking about um being a man today and i was telling him my journey and i was basically kind of explaining like man I'm, I'm a multifaceted person depends on the day and time where you meet me um I might be doing one thing and then later on that day might be doing something totally different the next day maybe nothing at all and um basically as, as i was explaining like myself to him um he, he said like he's like oh you're a modern renaissance man because the word that i personally use when talking to him i was like man you know my goal is to be a polymath you know i'm like i i'm multifaceted i like doing multiple things and he's just like yeah man he's like i can see that he said, he's like you're a modern renaissance man and i begin to think about that more and more and um when I and, and when I was like in my early my early twenties, um, even just like right out of high school, um, I was I was I saw myself being a, a Renaissance man. I always saw myself doing multiple things. Like um, I've even gone through struggles in my life in my twenties of like trying to be normal and just do one thing like everybody else in society. But I've just come to terms as I've gotten older um, that God made me the way that He did, and I love being a Renaissance man. Some people believe that you. Um, need to um, be an expert in one field and that's a cool perspective and that works for some people but I have more of like a, a Swiss army knife uh, approach to my life. I like knowing a little about a lot and that has uh, even since I was a kid I've always been that way. I've just, I have a curious mind and just my total makeup um, makes me well-rounded and diverse and makes me to be able um, to be an asset to myself and to society and I'm saying all this to say that I think in today's world, you have to be a renaissance man. You, you, I, I don't think you, today you can just survive um, by just choosing one thing and one thing only. You know, I think today you gotta, you gotta expand. You gotta learn. You gotta. There's a lot to keep up with today. Um, I was having another conversation recently about AI and and how AI is starting to um, creep into our lives more apparently now. It's been around for a while, but I think now just over the past uh, two years, we've really seen um, AI really pop out in front of us and. and a lot of people are taking advantage of that, of that and a lot of people aren't instead of sitting and complaining about society and um, what you don't like look at where society is what's going on and make yourself valuable learn to learn the tools use chat gpt use bard use any any generative ai tool or any sort of ai that you can possibly learn and use and in today's world especially living in the west having access to the internet um, there is no excuse for you not becoming more valuable as a man. I, I wish I could say the world was fair and that um, all people are treated equal and men are treated equal, but that's just not reality. The, the, you, are, um, you are as valuable as you know yourself to be and make yourself to be. Um, and that's something that I'm constantly thinking about and just reflecting on, you know, I'm constantly reading and just trying to learn, just trying to see where the world's going and paying attention to the gifts and talents that God has given me. And, I, and, and why I said you have to see yourself valuable first before the world sees you valuable, because as a man, the world is always going to objectify you and try and put you in a place, right? You can either stay in that category and allow society to put you in a place, or you can see the value within yourself and you place yourself within society, right? And so for me, I, you know, I've, I've taken my gifts and talents and all of my different experiences that I've gathered over the past 12 years, and I've figured out how to make it work for me. And as I was talking about in my last video about evolving, I think for us as men, it's important for us to do that. Um, that that's how we survive and we live on and we we leave a legacy and we push society forward is by becoming more valuable is by learning is by being our best selves um it's not about competing with other people and trying to beat the next man out you're just trying to beat who you were yesterday out right when you learn to focus on you and to and to value you and just to become valuable 
because you understand your God-given purpose and just your, your the, you wake up every day and you have breath in your body. And if you can move, you got your hands and mobility. Um, you are uh, here for a reason and you you dive deep into that. Just just even just that that small thing that we take for granted of just waking up and being able to move our body, and have breath um, is so deep and so powerful. But we oftentimes look look over. But when you when you learn to value that and realize like, man, God, you put me here on earth and you're allowing me to be able to have breath in my body. What 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 are my gifts and talents? What are the exposure uh, things that you've exposed me to? What are those natural incl in, um, inclinations that um, I tend to lead towards? You know, follow those things. Go down a rabbit hole on YouTube or using Chat GPT and, and and learning as much as you can about whatever those interests are. That's something that one of my mentors told me in my in, in, in my early twenties as I was um, exploring trying to figure out what I was going to do. He was just like, man explore everything and soak up as much knowledge as you can and be a sponge. And I'm so thankful for that because now when I meet people and I network and I go places, I've been able to see and do so much that I can pretty much walk in any room and be around all groups of people and culture and have something to talk about and make myself valuable. And not in the sense that it needs to be some business exchange and make myself profitable, but um, I carry substance. I can, I can, uh, I'm humble enough to be taught by other people and ask questions and learn from other people, but I'm also capable, of, capable, of, capable enough to be able to teach others, you know, and, and impart wisdom and knowledge and lived experiences and not just some theory that I read in a book, right? Because I value myself and I value my mind and I value the breath of my body and I, and I invest in that, right? And as you invest in yourself and you learn new skills, um, my background has has always been in trades, um, but I've also um, been you know good enough with computers where I understand technology, and I've always tried to do my best to to marry those worlds you know together. Um, and um, I'm constantly just paying attention to where things are going and just doing my best to know about it and just keeping up. Right? I think as we get older, it's easy for us to get lazy. Or and even even about an age thing in today's world, it's so easy to um, to sedate ourselves by constantly just wasting our time and energy by entertaining ourselves and scrolling on our phone instead of using our phone as the ultimate resource to educate, to learn and to level up. Um, I made my first six figures at like like 1920 and it came from hard work you know my first business um out of college i mentioned you know my last video that i had a clothing line with a friend in college um my first business out outside of that was a tree business and i used to climb trees every day and cut them down and do like uh land clearing and stuff for people right and that's where I made my first six figures. And that really like gave me that foundation to know that, man, I can really do this thing as an entrepreneur. And at that time, like, you know, I was young and just hungry. Right. And I was willing to do any and everything just to have my freedom and to be able to survive for myself. So I took things that I learned um, from Instagram at that time, you know, becoming a big thing and like understanding a little bit about marketing based off of what I did with the clothing line. I began to take those things and apply it to what I was doing with the tree business. So I was able to take that and and, and marry my mind and my body, right? Because I, it, this was a very uh, physical skill that I was doing at the time, but I had the mind to be able to market, but then also the mouth to be able to communicate and sell myself whenever people would call me from my marketing that I did online for my services. And so this wasn't, these weren't necessarily things that I was taught in a classroom. And I know sometimes, um, all people, but for us as men, we can feel limited if we don't ha if we don't take the traditional route, like if we don't have a education or a degree behind our name, especially in today's time where women um, outrank men um, and, and especially as uh, minority men. Um, you can you can feel less than right, and and I've been there because again I didn't I didn't finish college I went through that that phase and just had to learn that uh, regardless of having a title or a degree or not we are we are we have all been given um, natural um, just abilities there's just certain things that are just innate to you and certain things you just have to exercise and learn and become better at um, some people may be better in certain areas than you are but that's not what to focus on you are to just glean and see like what are the what are the things that I need to, to work on or what are the things that I see 
for me, like I watch other businesses and I observe other people to see the the infrastructure of like a business or a brand or, or whatever to, to see the, the moving parts. And then I look within myself to see like, okay, like I have the same ability and capacity. What are the things that I need to, to learn and do to operate at that same level, right? And it's not a comparison of like, they're better than me. It's a, I can do the same thing. I have the same build. I got breath in my body and I got a mind. I can do the same thing that they're doing, right? And so getting back to the main point, um, as a man on, on this journey, you have to be able to see yourself. You, be, you have to be able to see your strengths and weaknesses. You have to be able to see your gifts and talents, right? Because when you can look in the mirror and see yourself or, and also being able to close your eyes and see your inner being and know your makeup, um, that, that puts you in a very powerful place, right? Because you, you see where there's room for improvement. Um, it's like game film. It's like if, if you were to go back and rewatch your life and rewatch your patterns, you could see where you need to improve at. And, and I oftentimes go back through my life and I look at, I just sit and I meditate over the things that have made me successful and the things that have caused me to fail. And I take note of those things, especially now that I'm 30. And I know I've been harping on 30 in my last video, but that's because for me as a man, like just being where I'm at, um, the odds are against us, right? Um, and I'm not going to go off on a tangent on that, but I'm, I'm really thankful that I, I've, I've been blessed to be able to make it to 30 and to, to be on my own. I've, I've had my ups and downs, um, but I'm, I'm thankful to, to be at to be to 30. But I feel the maturation at 30. I feel the wisdom. Um, I, I feel just to 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 take it a step further. Um, Jesus started his ministry at 30. Right. So there's something that's very significant about a man turning 30. And I just feel that I don't even know how to explain it, but it's just something going back to what I said earlier. It just feels innate. Right. But getting back to the main point, um, do whatever it is that you need to do to go on the journey to really know yourself and really understand yourself and develop a work ethic. Right. Um, the exercise and develop your faith, understand what God is for you personally and your connection to God and being able to communicate and recognize your awareness with God. And that alone right there is the a solid foundation that will make you successful in whatever it is that, that you decide to do. Again, my background um, as an entrepreneur has always been in trades. I've dibbled and dabbled in other business ventures, a little bit in tech. Um, I've mentioned before a, a coffee shop and some other things. Um, but I've made my money and I've been able to survive from service based businesses, very boring businesses. Right. And um, this allowed me to see um, a different a different side of business. Um, and sustainability. In today's world with the internet, you got a lot of people that have online based businesses and, you know, sell products, e commerce, uh, maybe di digital services and whatnot. And all of those are good in its place. But for those of you out there, you don't necessarily have those, those skills or you don't necessarily want to work online. I encourage when I, when I talk to my mentees and like my little cousins, um, I encourage them to go into trades and, and service based businesses. I encourage them to go to trade school. I encourage them to um, get an apprenticeship apprenticeship and going into HVAC, plumbing, roofing, electrical, um, uh, aircraft mechanic, like like hard skills that you can't can't be replaced by um, software with, at least not yet. And I think we're a long ways off from that. But um, these are the things like and even if you got like um, uh, a, a job where you work in in a, in a white collar field, I think it's important for, as a man for for us to learn how just to be good with our hands right and just to exercise that mechanical side side of us i'm naturally a kinesthetic learner right like i i can put my hands on something um and figure it out very quickly i learn by doing not necessarily sitting and receiving just theory about it like I, if i can be thrown into anything i can pick it up and i can learn it and saying all that to say that in today's world, um, I, to really get ahead and really to step out of the place of survival mode and thriving, I think you got to be able to create multiple streams of income. And I think ways to be able to do that today is that you, we have a um, the opportunity now for the side gig economy, whether that you do Uber on the side, let's say you work a nine to five, but you do Uber on the side, um, or you do something um, like I can't think of the app, but it's where like you can go to people's houses and you can put together furniture for them, um, making yourself learning, learning if, if or if you already are mechanically inclined, like putting these gifts and talents to use, right, to make yourself more valuable and more profitable, but also to be able to bring income um, 
more income into your life. You know, I think it's important for a man to be productive and, and to always um, be doing something right to, to progress and to get ahead. But just I don't really talk much about money on my channel, but financially, man, I think it is a time, a great time to be alive for men to be able to hustle and, and, and to make money, you know, and getting back to what I was saying, like, um, you know, there's a lot of side gig stuff out there and you can research more of that like by looking on YouTube. Um, but learning learning to, to pick up a trade, you know, learning to um, how to cut grass or um, how to how to, you know, doing commercial cleaning. Like I, throughout my journey as an entrepreneur, I've been able to meet a lot of uh, millionaires and um, I've met people on both the white collar side and the blue collar side. But for for my personal experience, most of the millionaires that I've met come from boring, dirty money. Right. In a world where people uh, are typically like as as society evolves in the West, people get lazier. Right. And as uh, being able again, going back to what I, I was saying about seeing where society is going. I saw this, you know, when I was graduating high school, I was like, man, the world is moving more towards tech and nothing wrong with that. I saw everybody flock in that direction. But I also saw the the gap in opportunity for skilled trades. Right. And so. Um, I went into places and positions to where I could learn sales, where I could learn project management, where I learned the ins and outs of roofing construction, um, where I learned how to work on cars and replace certain parts on cars and making myself valuable. Right. And so today, um, throughout my career as an entrepreneur, I've had uh, two business ventures going at the same time and then also uh, working a, a project management job where I get paid commission and, and using my my sales gifts and talents to get ahead. And I'm saying all these things. These are the things that have helped me to, as I've been talking about, you know, in my videos, I think it's important for men to provide for themselves and to be financially independent um, before a woman, if you're not already in a relationship or dating, like like making yourself valuable by learning skills and trades and in today's world, being a renaissance man, being willing to go and do and work in areas where other people don't, right? Um, I, I've never been afraid of dirty work. I, again, I come from a working class family. You know, my dad taught me at a very early age the value of hard work. Even when I was playing football, I remember playing peewee football before growing up. And um, what set me apart from a lot of my teammates and just just even just in other atmospheres outside of sports just growing up was my work ethic. But it's because what my dad taught me. I remember I had a football. I would have a football game at like like maybe like three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but we, my dad, my responsibility like in, in, in middle school became uh, cutting the grass and taking care of the yard by myself. And we had a pretty decent sized yard. And uh, I remember to coming to my dad, I was like, hey, dad, like, you know, I got a football game at three. I was trying to get out of cutting the grass. He was like, he's like, you know, I don't care about that. You know, he's like, that yard better be done. You got enough time to cut the grass and still have enough time to rest before your game. And so that work ethic and like my mind being able to see at an early age as a young man that I can do, I can do more than what I think. Right. And that's what I think the value of a man being around, whether a father or uncle, uh, whatever version of a, a masculine figure being, being around. I think that's why it's important, a healthy one to be able to teach that, to be able to override your emotions and how you feel and to logically put you in a place to push you, to show you how to get to your edge. And so at an early age, my father showing me that, hey, all right, you, I can get up, cut the yard, um, have enough time to rest and still go play football. It made my work ethic go to a whole nother level. And I didn't understand it then, but now I understand why my work ethic is so different and I'm set apart from um, a lot of the peers that I grew up with. And this is enough, no shame or putting them down, but just me recognizing the value of of going the extra mile and that being implemented into my life. And I understand that everybody maybe didn't grow up with that thinking, but I'm telling you now, um, as a young, as a young man, old man, wherever you are, that is how you get ahead in this in this in this society, right? Doesn't mean you got to work hard physically the rest of your life, but do what you need to do to be able to put some money in your pocket and in your bank and put a roof over your head and learn how to live well below your means and stack your bread. Save as much money as you possibly can as you're hustling and working and using all your gifts and talents. Maybe you work, you know, a, a regular job somewhere from nine to five, but then afterwards maybe do Uber. You do Uber Eats and. And then maybe you wake up, you know, earlier the next day and you do some trading on the stock market and then you go to work like being willing to do whatever it is you have to do for um, a short period of time to elevate. Right. Like that's something that has helped me on my journey as an entrepreneur and as a man. I'm willing to do what other people are not willing to do. And that's what has made me successful. Um, 
that's what has opened doors for me, right? Because I'm willing to fall off of Instagram and fall off the map and fall off from hanging out with friends and going out and partying, and going to the club. Um, I did that at an early age when I dropped out from college. I remember just like a lot of my friends were in college and they would call me to like come hang out and visit them or like they would come in town for uh, summer break and like we would want to hang out. And uh, I remember one time like I was with some friends and and um, it was like a house party going on. I stopped by the house party and I like, hung out for a minute. But then I dipped early because I knew I had to get up at 530 the next morning. And I knew that I had to go and do a big tree job. Right. Like I knew that my life is in my hands at that at the time. I think it still is. But tree service and logging is like the deadliest job in the world. It was one of those things where I knew like I got I need my full functioning capacity of every part of my spirit, mind and body tomorrow. I can't afford to be drinking right now and, and hanging out though I want to, right? But but at an early age, like leaping out and putting myself into uncomfortable positions, leaving my comfort zone and starting a business, it made me grow up a lot faster than a lot of my peers, right? But it showed me that, okay, I can live like no other now to live like no other later. And what, what I mean by that is like take six months and fall off the map and just go into complete grind mode. Uh, get a, get a, a routine where you're going to bed at the same time every night, you're waking up at the same time, you got you exercising at least three or four times a week and just go into grind mode and just fall off the map from everything that is not an asset in your life. Anything that is not producing profit or purpose in your life, fall away from it. The biggest thing that, that gets us hung up as men is pleasure. Whether we find that pleasure um, in playing video games, whether we find that pleasure within dirty movies online, whether we find that pleasure with women, whether we find it in substances like, like you know, um, cannabis and alcohol, whatever that thing is, we all know ourselves, right? But know that, know what your weaknesses are and know what slows you down and know how to taper or cut those things off to be able to level up and to get to where you really want to be. It's easy today to talk about how hard the world is and the economy and inflation and no opportunity. Like you can sit and waste time doing that while there's another man out there that is competing with himself and not complaining and trying to figure out what he can do to get ahead. It's all mentality at the end of the day. Control what you can control and level up, right? Um, that has been my mentality and continues to be my mentality is like, yeah, times are hard right now. There's a lot going on in the world. I am not ignorant to that, right? But I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on what can Caleb personally do? What are my gifts and talents? Where am I willing to, to stretch myself? What are the things that I need to learn to continue to evolve and provide for myself as a man? You know, like at the end of the day, it is the survival of the fittest. And God has gifted you with all of the gifts and talents to survive. It's up to you what you do with it. You can sit and run your mouth and complain about things and about how the world isn't fair and oh, woe is me and this and that. Or you can put your mind to use and learn and sharpen yourself. I drown myself in personal development books um, constantly. I'm, I'm reading multiple books at a time right now. I'm reading a you know a book by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Um, I'm constantly um, surrounding my 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 mind with with thoughts of winning and thoughts of succeeding. Uh, reading the Bible under you know there there's so much that comes from from the Bible as well. Uh, reading Proverbs, reading Psalms, you know, like for those of you who don't read the Bible at all, that's a great place to start as a man, just waking up every single day and putting a proverb in your spirit, right? Um, to encourage yourself because yeah, it does get lonely, does get isolating, especially as a man when you're striving to do the right thing. I'm I'm by no means a perfect man. I have had my shares of falling and, and repeating um, unhealthy patterns, but I am aware of myself and I know what I need to do to fuel myself. I, I, I can catch myself now when, when I'm off track, but I've also positioned myself to have accountability partners in my life that I can trust and who are like-minded that encourage me to keep going and to be better and to do the right thing as a man, um, to continue to elevate, man. Like, I believe that we can all be whatever idea we have in our mind of success, right? Success for everybody is different. Success uh, uh, for you may not be that you want to make a million dollars. You may not even want to make six figures. All you might personally need is, is $50,000 a year. Work towards that and be happy with that, right? Let go of, of what the world deems as success and you define that for what it is for you and fall off the map and go after it and go get it. I promise you, man, the, one of the secrets to my life is, again, falling off the map. When I, when I disappear off the internet um, and 
as I've done before in the past, like off of YouTube and off of Instagram, I am building a business or I'm doing something that needs all my focus and attention at that time. I'm at a place now where I have a little bit more freedom and time availability to where I can do multiple things at once. But if, if, I, if I feel that, hey, you know what, I need to go in the cave and just grind right now and just bring that dog out of me and just hustle and work and grind, I know how to do that. You know, I've been there and done that and I'm still capable of doing that now. And it's a time and place for it all. You know, and I love that that quote from Dave Ramsey where he says, live like no other now to live like no other later. Like that is real. It's something that I had a tug of war with in my 20s because I saw what my peers were doing who were still in college or still just young and like partying, and hanging out. But I had to recognize that, man, I'm set apart. Like I'm different. My, my journey is different. My dream is different. What I deem as success for me is different. So certain habits and things that are acceptable for other people to do are not for me. Right. And again, it's no judgment about the habit itself is just that I know myself and I know what causes me to spiral up and elevate. And I know those things that cause me to spiral down and to fall away from my dream and my purpose of what success and my, my reason for being here on earth is, right? And so in today's world, I think it is possible to be whatever it is that you want to be, whatever your heart's desire, right? And I think to achieve that today, you have to be a rena renaissance man. I, I think today to really get ahead, I don't think you can just be a one track man, right? Um, and and even just for yourself, you are you are multifaceted. You are spirit, mind, and body. You need to learn how to be a priest for yourself and how to lead yourself spiritually. Spiritually, you need to know how to be an active man and how to take care of your your body physically. How to strengthen yourself, um, putting yourself in in the gym and working out, or just if you can't afford a gym membership right now, challenging yourself every single day when you wake up to do 50 push-ups and 50 sit-ups and 50 air squats like starting wherever it is that you are and surrounding your mind with things that are going to give you new knowledge and as you get new knowledge you create a new reality around you right because um, not to get deep into that, but our thoughts are powerful on a subatomic level. Our thoughts are literally creating the reality around us, right? But to create a new reality, you got to get new knowledge. It is imperative that you read books that as you're on YouTube, you're watching things that are encouraging you and, 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 and allowing you to elevate and pushing you to elevate and want to be better. Again, I don't talk much about money on, on my channel, but I do think money is important. Learning how to manage money, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but just in today's world, learning to be a renaissance man, learning to hustle in every way, shape, form, and possible. I don't think it's, it's possible to just do one thing and really get ahead. For some people, that may be the case, but I'm talking to my regular fellas out there that maybe didn't go the route of, of getting a college degree and you're just, you, you're working, but you, you, you're trying to figure out like other ways to get ahead, man. Like, um, as long as you got breath in your body and you, you can move your, your arms and hands, there's, there's ways to hustle and get ahead, man. I remember, um, when I got into the, I got into the automotive business and, um, I was buying my tools while working at a business, right? Like I went and worked at a business to learn the infrastructure of how this was work. Because when I started, my vision was I'm going to start a business within the automotive industry, right? So I went and got a job at a company. I was making like $8 an hour. And this is when I had transitioned in my life out of like the construction industry where I was making pretty decent money. I was probably making like seventy five to $80,000 a year. And I had, I moved back home and started my life over and live, went, went to live with my parents and went back to making like seven or eight dollars an hour right but i had a vision i knew what it is that i had to do to start my next business venture so long story short i went and i worked at a company but while i was working at that company i was doing my best to pay off the the debt that i had you know incurred um and I sold my vehicle, I downsized my life, I got rid of my car payment, I bought like a cash vehicle, and I just began to save my money, invest in myself, because I knew the tools and the next vehicle that I was gonna have to buy for my next business venture. But long story short, um, once I felt like I got a good grasp on the trade itself, within like three to six months, I had learned how to do the trade and within two weeks of even like getting the job, I was I was doing certain things by myself, right? Because I was just that locked in and hungry on getting to this next phase of my life and I and I was a little bit laser fo more laser focused now on what on how I like to do business and what type of business I wanted to be in. But anyway, in the in in the mix of doing this, I began to I was like, Man, it's eight dollars an hour, like you know, this is this is 
good because I got the opportunity to learn the trade, but I ain't really making no money. So what I started to do is um, I went and I, and I worked for a roofing company on the weekends. And for those of you who have ever done any type of like roofing labor, you know that it's hard work, right? But it pays a lot of money. So like I was working my, my automotive job during the week, but then on Saturdays and sometimes after work, like I would go and I, I would do roofing jobs, right? Like, and I would just, sometimes I would just be on the roof, just like handing shingles or I would be on the ground cleaning up, but I was doing whatever it is that I, I knew that I could physically do to make money. Any opportunity that somebody um, would, would come my way with, if even like, you know, I still had all of my equipment from my tree business. So if somebody's like, hey man, I need some, uh, my, my tree cut down or or some limbs trimmed up over my house. Like I would call some buddies up and I would go do that on the, on the side to make some extra money. Like I was using all of my gifts and talents to elevate myself financially, right? And I still have the same mentality today, right? But long story short, like six months in, I was like, okay, I, I've got, you know, I had bought the, the vehicle that I needed to start my van, but I still needed a little bit extra money because I was pouring all of my money into my tools and equipment. And I was like, man, I still need to make a little bit extra money before I jump full time into this new business venture. So what I did is uh, I went to my, um, to the people that I was working for at the time and I, and I asked for a raise. And, but in the back of my head, I said, if they're not going to give me the raise that I want. I know it well enough now. And I've also gone to school for this, this, this thing. And I got a certificate for it. So I understand the ins and outs. If they don't give me the money that I need, I'm just going to go roofing full time for a couple of months. Cause I know that I knew then I can make $1,500 a week roofing. Right. But this was very, very, very hard work. Like I'm, I'm getting up at, at 5 AM to be at a job site by 6 37 AM. And I'm not, I may not leave till 6 or 7 PM. Right. Like I, I was putting myself in a position to where I knew that it was going to be extremely difficult, but I was going to be able to make the money that I needed to make. It was a short term uh, pain for a long term pleasure. Right. Like my goal of getting to my next business venture. And this was all around the age of 23 uh, when I when, when I did this. Right. And so uh, anyway, um, I went and I asked for a raise and they didn't give me the raise that that I wanted. So I was like, thank you. I put in my two weeks right then and there. And I went and um, I started roofing full time. Right. And I remember just being on the roof and I'm like, man, this is so hot. This is so hard. But it pushed me. I was like, this is a means to an end. That's something that I've always believed in is like to use things as a stepping stone to 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 not just use um, not to just depend on one thing either, but to use everything that God has given me all the the connections and networking meeting people and working this job and working that and um, just I, using everything that I can to elevate and to be my best self and and I, I'm, I'm saying all this that to say that you all can do the same thing is it hard yes but where you are is also hard too you got to pick your heart you can sit and complain about how things are or you can go and challenge yourself and and put your go through three to six months of a hard transition to change to be able to have the next three to six years, you'd be in a totally different position, right? And so that that's, that's you know, my, my rant to you all today is that in today's world, you got to be a renaissance man. You got to be willing to to work those extra hours to maybe, you know, hustle two to three jobs and maybe drop Uber or do Uber Eats on the side or or do task grabbing and put furniture together or go, go you know, get a cleaning job or something. Like there's so many different things out there that you can do, but oftentimes too, what's missed is that there's a lot of money in dirty jobs. I know I know plumbers that make $250,000 a year. Uh, I know I know a guy that works by himself and all he does is commercial cleaning and he made 30 grand a, a month, like 30 to 35 grand a month, you know? This was when I was living in South Florida, I met this dude from Cuba and um um, I was doing some work on his car for him and uh, we started talking business and just like entrepreneurship and whatnot. And he was telling me like, he's like, man, look at the back of my truck. And he had this, this buffer. He's like, man, I wax and I strip floors. And he's just like, man, I do like $35,000 a month. And he's like, man, I maybe only work three days a week. Right now that didn't just happen overnight. He had to work up to that, but it opened my mind to see that there's so many different ways to get money out here doing the boring, dirty jobs that other people don't want to do. I've been willing in my path and in my journey um, because I come from a working class blue collar family. My dad was a blue collar worker. You know, my mom was the one that went to school and, and, and did more white collar stuff. But the men that I saw around me growing up were all blue collar workers and hustlers, right? Like I saw my uncle's work a job during the week and then cut grass after work and do stuff on Saturday. So I, I took on that mentality and I've never been afraid or embarrassed by like social status to like to do something dirty, right? 
Um, I have been blessed, you know, to 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 see uh, a lot of money that my parents have never seen, and my parents' parents, and and um, but it's because of the foundation that they gave me, but and this the work ethic and my foundation and God has opened doors for me to be able to do and see so much. But it's because I'm I'm willing to be the Renaissance man. I'm willing to work multiple jobs if I have to to provide for myself. I'm willing to to do what no other person is willing to do because I know that this is a stepping stone. This isn't my forever. I knew when I took on the job with doing roofing that I had a goal and the, and, the, and it was so hard and so intensive that I gave it my all while I was there. But it also was a push that, man, I got to figure something out. I got to continue to use my mind to figure out what my next thing is for business. And so I remember like I would go work during the day and do roofing and then I would come home and get on YouTube and I would watch videos about about auto repair. And I would just look at other people that were doing, had their business already. I was looking at what they were doing for marketing. I was looking at the different vehicles that we're working on. Like I was totally locked in on doing what I needed to do to get ahead, to get out of my parents' house, to become independent and to never be back in that same place and position ever again. And I have not looked back since, but it's because again, my faith and belief in God and my work ethic and my willingness to educate and learn. I do not feel that anybody else out there is better than me. I'm the best at being me and I'm no better than anybody else out there, but you will not beat me being me. If you are in my skin, and if you are in my shoes, you cannot beat me being me because I know me. I recognize my value and I'm living myself to the fullest. That is the game of life and how to play it. It is not about competing with other people. It is competing with the man that you were yesterday. Be willing to live like no other now so you can live like no other later and level up. Be willing to work multiple jobs. Be willing to put in those extra hours to get OT. Save that money. Put that money to the side. Learn how to invest your money. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. That's something that in my later 20s, I realized the value of is saving your money, living below your means, learning how to, to open a, a Roth IRA or a 401k, um, learning to trade stocks or options or investing in crypto. Like It's one thing to make money, but then you got to figure out where to put this money when you start to make it. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But today, I just want to talk about the survive and get ahead. Today, as a man, you got you to gotta be a renaissance man. You can't just depend on one path no more. You got to be willing, again, to live like no other so you can live like no other later. It is all a stepping stone. Like Put in six months of just dedicated hard work of being on routine, eating right, praying and being in your Bible, being abstinent, falling off from distractions and drinking and and hanging out with the homies like just fall off the map and just work and go into grind mode and watch where your life goes i promise that you'll level up and you'll be forever grateful for that six months of just becoming the best version of yourself and watch how that sets up sets you up and puts you on a different trajectory for the next five or six years i promise you won't regret it but anyway i'll be back soon guys peace